welcome everybody. We're on the section of the Cape Raft Trail, but the bit that we're on uh, is <laughs> I'm probably probably my fault. Um, I thought that we'd try a shortcut, and and it turned out that it wasn't a shortcut, and the path that we were on. Came to a came to a dead end, so we thought we'd come up and join the path that we want, but unfortunately, it's up through all of this stuff here. So we've probably been eaten alive by the midges just trying to get up here. The path that we want is probably about a hundred meters ahead. Because um, it actually crosses this deer fence. So if you're in Invred Invredeal, Invredeal, um, Follow the zigzaggy thing, not try and take a shortcut. At least that's have got some splashing water there. <laughs> I can't see a crossing point up there at the moment. Uh, oopsie. That's the path that we would have come up if we'd have uh, followed if I hadn't have led Chris up the garden path. Mind you, there is a path on the map, but it's not there in real life. So we could have come up there. So if you are doing the Cape Raft Trail, follow the red ziggy zaggy line and do not follow right next to the river, because if you do that, you're, you're gonna be up the creek without a paddle. And then we've got to get up there and then follow up over that way. I was just thinking it feels a bit like uh, Laura and Hardy, you know, <laughs> Laura would be doing it properly and Hardy would be saying, it will go this way, and uh, it's all wrong, the breeze is picking up up here. This bit is uh, very, very wet underfoot. It's got nice wet feet through here. It's very wet and boggy, but it's not cold. So I've got a shoe, you know, trail, trail shoes on. And of course they're wet, but it's fine. There's pretty scenery straight through over there. There's a little path along here that we're following. So we're making quite good, reasonable progress along this bit now. The path kind of comes and goes. It's an intermittent path but I think in the mist you'd have to be quite careful but as long as you keep looking up I have a very bad habit of looking down all the time but as long as you keep looking up you can make the path out and our elevation here about 530 meters here so it's not it's not a very high part you know walk this is probably about as high as we 
we'll get on here. Okay, well we're making our way down here and we're going to see if we can find somewhere flat. It looks flat, <laughs> but will it be dry enough? And that will be camp down there if we can find something flat and equally as important dry. We're carefully navigating these. I wonder how long that tree has been there. Do you think that tree has been there a very long time. It's kind of almost artistic. Heading down that way, Lass has found a bog over there to play in. Welcome to camp. It's there is a little bit of a breeze, which is clearly a very good thing um, because otherwise we're going to have a lot of midges. So look how much space I've got in here, though. <laughs> There's a load of space. I was a food bowl for Lassie, water bowl, she doesn't need that. I thought I'd bring myself some, because I've come so light, literally so light, that's about eight and a half kilograms for everything. I thought I'd treat myself to a hundred gram bar of So we've got one gas canister. Yeah, it's, I could have saved five grams and taken the cup of cover off, couldn't I? Never mind. So we've got gas canister. We've got bits and bobs in there. The ground is luckily quite dry here. I've got a lead here, which tomorrow if we get some sun, I can try charging something. That's my wind shirt. That's my pot for cooking. And in there is my sort of first aid power cable, a lighter, pen knife, you know, other stuff. So that's kind of like my bits and bobs bag, torches in there, um, the thing to hold the phone, some spare guy line. I've got this sheet which eventually I'm probably just going to put under me just so I've got a little bit more dry area to put things so actually it make more sense to to do it now wouldn't it we'll put that in there so that's my bits and bobs that can go there, first aid and such like can go there, jockey. What I'm going to do, and I've just got a very small foam mat, which I'm thinking, <laughs> which I'm thinking will be plenty. Under there, like that. Bring it down. A little bit more. I've not ever done this, so it's kind of like the blind leading the blind, as it were. I get that like that. And then basically, I've got a warm bit, you know, just here with the foam mat, not that it's exactly cold. And, you know, just a little bit more of overhang. I probably need more of this side, really. So we'll just move it that way. See, then I can, I can kneel on this now. So we can kneel here. And it's keeping my bed free. Probably going to have to just move that. I might have to fiddle the 
this thing here. I'll put, it, put a line across there just so I can hook at top. Then what I can do is I can. Oh, I've got the food. I was thinking, what have I got in there that's. So that's all my food for four days. And I didn't eat. Well, I had, I should tell you, I had one cereal bar just now. That's toilet paper. That's one power pack. That's my hat. Like a warm hat. If it's cool at night, just so I can warm my hat up. Warm my hat up. Warm my head up. That's the all important tea. That's fiery bug repellent. That's my down jacket. That's another power pack. So what I've done with the power packs, normally I would bring two 26 and a half thousand milliamp power packs because I get a lot. I get through a lot. Although walking like this, I might use less. But what I've done this time, I bought one 26 and a half thousand and one 10 thousand. Because I'm hoping that I can, I've saved a few grams. It's kind of an experiment really to see how we get on. To see how we get on really. So that's the sleeping bag. Hello. And that's, that's everything. Home mat. Water containers. Here I've got the kilt if I need it and a bug net. I'm getting quite cosy here. <laughs> I think we might be able to eat outside. Maybe. Maybe. It's it's a bit <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a bit it, it depends what that what that yes. Yeah. I might cook and then wander over and see you sometimes. Get some water and then... Oh yes, yes. You can just see a rainbow over that, going around, down to less, and then Chris has got his over there. And we're very cosy in here, I'll show you in here in a minute. Settled in here, very cosy. I've got my rain jacket on just for a bit of warmth. So, what did I bring with me? I've got my merino um, liner socks, merino liner socks. They were like 40 and a bit grams. These enlightened equipment trousers, about 37 grams, and I've just put them on. And, you know, because it's not cold and this is keeping you know, the wind off. I'm quite comfortable sitting up like this. I'm having my soup here. And I've got, I've pitched it really high at the front. I've even got the trekking pole on a rock to give it even more height. So we may not, <laughs> we may not get this height again so I'm going to make the most of that rock and maybe carry that rock with us but this is uh, very nice the only thing is now because my shoes are wet and um, my 
my socks are wet. <laughs> I'm confined. I bought this small piece of plastic, which I've just put down here, which means I can just, I've got a little dry area here. Because obviously we haven't got a tent. We don't need a footprint. So we've just got this little area here for dryness. I thought I was going to need my line um, for, for securing this up, but I think it's actually going to reach. Oh, there's camp. That's my tripody setup thing, little tent peg, and then um, put the top of the pole on that. So we've got this little piece of plastic there, which my feet can go on. Just gives me a little drier extra area over and above the bivvy. The grass is dry, so I've just put stuff over there. Set up there. And this is the glen up through here. And it, there was probably a settlement here because there's a there's a building that's left of one there. There's another one up there. And there's at least two or three, I think there was about four in total. So Chris has got his shelter set up over there. And then we're going to head over through that valley over there tomorrow. Just settle down. I've got a food there, she's eaten half. As it reminds me, I've got to find her, her vitamin tablet things. Let's just have a wander over to this. I put my wet shoes on, but I haven't got my wet socks on. So hopefully my feet don't get but they'll dry quickly enough. This is one of these settlements over here. It's a little bit full of stinging nettles and things. So here, I so see you've got one here. So there's one. There's, I don't know if that's one or two over there, but it's quite a big one there. You've got one up there, and then there's another one there, and there might even be the ruins of one there. <laughs> That's Chris looking very, very comfortable there. <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm, I'm on. Pardon? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I know they are, aren't they? Yes. I'll be doing. I'll be doing the goog the boogie, or whatever. Yeah, just watching Clarkson's farm. And that. Oh, it? <laughs> we need to bring a bit of a test here. Though. And then we've got haggis, haggis and neeps. So there's haggis and and the neep things. You can see carrot. Carrot and turnip. <laughs> oh, let's see. And that has hydrated very nicely. That is so nice. I do pity you vegetarians sometimes. <laughs> in our element really you couldn't get much draft here if you tried this is the this is the this is the way to keep midges at bay <laughs> just have as drafty a shelter as you can possibly get <laughs> all right my haggis and neeps is just about ready it's perfect <laughs> 